There is a player missing from this ESPN graphic that is averaging 31 points per game, 12 rebounds per game, is one of the best defenders in the world with the best record in the entire league. You see the title, you know what this is about, Giannis Antetokounmpo, who according to Kendrick Perkins has a 0% chance of winning this year's MVP award. Two-time MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo, what are his chances to win MVP? Right now, 0%. I don't have them in my top four. Now, let's see what Perk says about Tatum and Luka. What chance are you giving the Celtics star to win MVP? I'm giving them a 25% chance of winning the MVP. He's on the best team with the best record. What chance are you giving Luka to bring home the hardware? Another 25% chance, Max. When you look at Luka, this Dallas Maverick team is three games above 500 and in the race for us the postseason in the Western Conference because of his brilliance play. There is obviously some major inconsistencies right here from Perkins. How can you give Tatum the 25% chance for having a better record by two games at this point of the season, but also have Luka, who's barely over 500, having 25% over Giannis' 0% chance? So you're telling me Luka Doncic can get away with a bad record, but Giannis with an injured team can't, despite him still being top two in the league record-wise? Let's make it make sense here. And this is going to be a common theme throughout the video with the media. Consistently inconsistent. But let's proceed a bit, what does Tatum do better than Giannis? JT does have the better outside game, but Giannis overall is the better scorer, he's the better playmaker, and he's the better defender. Boston held the first seed until the Bucks got healthy, there is zero case for Jason Tatum over Giannis, and even saying this a month ago was egregious. The NBA media is on what actually feels like an anti-Giannis propaganda run this season. I have never seen a player be this undeniably great on both ends and be completely neglected to this extent. It's gotten to the point that he cannot even get a player of the month award. Last month, Jalen Brunson won player of the month, so let's compare what he did to Giannis. 27 points to 29 points, six rebounds to 10 rebounds, four assists to six assists, 38 minutes played to 28 minutes played, eight and two record to nine and no record. Factor in defensive value, it's obvious who the best player that month was, not even a question. And that's not the craziest part. In two of these games, Giannis played under 10 minutes because he got injured early on in the game. If we filter those two games out, he averaged 36, 13, and six. If that is not enough for him to get even a player of the month award, what in the hell do they even want from him? I do think that Giannis should be held to high standards because he is considered the best player in the world by the majority of people. But at this point, it is like the media wants Wilt Chamberlain 50 point per game numbers to give this man any sort of recognition. By the way, when we look at his points per minute this season, hey, bro could average at least 40 if he got Wilt's minutes. The top 5 players of all time in points per minute for a season includes 1 from Harden, 2 from Wilt, and 2 from Giannis Antetokounmpo. He is legitimately so great that Skip Bayless is grasping for any little argument he can think of to discredit Giannis from being called the best player in the world. Yeah. Like right now, I got 1A, Nikola Jokic, 1B, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Okay, who by the way, as we speak, is making a grand total of 65% of his free throws. 32, 12, and five on 53. I mean, come on, Skip. 65% from the free throw line? Skip. Disqualified. Okay, no. That reminds me of his criticisms on another all-time player, and that's all I'ma say. But Skip is an idiot. We all know this. With Jokic's recent surge to averaging a triple-double though and getting a big lead on the Western Conference's first seed, Shanna Sharp thinks that it is a new best player in the world. He's giving you 25, 11, and 10 on 63% shooting, and he has the number one seed in the Western Conference. I've been trying to tell you this. He's gonna win it, Skip. He's gonna do something unprecedented. Nikola Jokic is about to become a three-time MVP. So you're willing to go all the way to best the best player he, he, on planet. He's the best player right now, Skip. He's right the best now. player. He's the best player right now. Now, I just want to remind you all, after back-to-back -back MVPs and back-to-back -back playoff exits, nobody was giving Giannis this benefit of the doubt. Nobody. But suddenly, it's all cool for Jokic. Giannis had to win one before getting any best in the world shouts. And even after winning one, the majority were still saying that it was Kevin Durant that was the best player. My point is, Giannis Antetokounmpo is being held to a completely different standard. Not just today where he's not getting his recognition, but after that final MVP in 2020, that's when it really ended up hitting. Listen to what Zach Lowe had to say about Giannis's MVP case coming into the next season after a second round exit to the Miami Heat. And he's just, you know, I think the bar to three-peat as MVP for voters is going Surely. to be incredibly yeah. high. And, yeah. and when you get rolled in the second round by the Miami Heat, 
it gets even higher. So what are Zach Lowe's thoughts on the MVP award this year? You can probably make a good guess what this nerd is going to say. So if you had to make a decision today, who would you choose? So I have not uh, updated my spreadsheet, my nerd spreadsheet in like 40 gotcha. games. So I, I don't know what the numbers say. I suspect they all say that it should be Jokic. Um, I would probably be leaning Jokic right now. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, man. His VORP come shot on off Grizzly piss rating is really the difference, isn't it, man? The same metrics that this calculator merchant uses to make his MVP votes are the same metrics that say Alex Caruso is a top 15 player in the league. Shit, as a Bulls fan, I fucking wish he was. Damn, Josh Akogi is a top 20 player, man. The Suns are really a super team now, aren't they? This loser is really talking about... Oh, I need to update my spreadsheets to see who's my MVP. Man, CJ, if you don't get this hideous receding hairline having ass geek off your show. In 2020, Tim McMahon said it's an award for one regular season. But it is hard to justify giving three straight to a guy who is yet to take his team to the finals, much less win a championship. What are the odds this guy's MVP vote this year is Nikola Jokic? I got it as the same odds as Zach Lowe's hair falling out over the next five years. For some reason, there is a double standard the media created that goes against Giannis Antetokounmpo. To open up the season, Giannis was absolutely incredible. By the way, nothing has changed. He still is. But after the first few months, ESPN's first straw poll results had came in. Jason Tatum is leading Giannis Antetokounmpo in this first round of balloting. But while Jason Tatum is leading, I don't think people should look at as him being a runaway favorite to win the award this year. At this point of the season, the Celtics had a few games on the Bucks for the first seed, but this is with no Middleton for Milwaukee and role players missing the start of the season as well. The only argument that Jason Tatum had over Giannis was that one seed by two games. But shit, that is all that the media needed to see. Remember last year when the six seed was enough as long as you have some injured teammates for the reason your record is brought down? Don't we all remember that? But anyway, fast forward to the most recent straw poll and these results were in. When you look at the, the way this played out with him getting 77 out of 100 first place votes, having over 900 point total points in the poll, as you see here on the screen, He's a very heavy favorite to win. All right, bro. Who is still giving Jason Tatum first place votes? I am convinced they just want to fuck him at this point. And speaking of that, Tristan Thompson might be a bit fruity with his hideous top three list that he's got. Number three, we're going to go with the big fella, Nikola Jokic. Yes, he's number three. Number two, Joel Embiid, okay. leading the league in scoring. But my number one, the MVP in the league, Jason Tatum. And you know what a coach told me growing up? Big time players make big time plays in big moments. Okay. First of all, he definitely wants to fuck Tatum, but that's besides the point. Where the hell is Giannis Antetokounmpo? And he is not the only former player burning up the kitchen with a hideous cook sesh. Jalen Rose, I'm on your ass like them 81 points that Kobe gave you. A drink, Mr. Bryant? Yeah, I'll have a, uh, a, a vodka martini. How many olives would you like? 81. Who is your MVP this year? And number two, who do you think the finals come down to when it's all said and done this year? As I look at this year, there's some amazing candidates, but you can't ignore what the Joker's doing. Right now, Denver's number one in the West. Historic stats. This dude about to average a triple-double. As a center. As a center. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love what Luca's doing. He putting up historic numbers, flirting with leading the league and scoring. I love what Jaws doing. He's spectacular. You know how explosive he is. And you got to always talk about Steph in the conversation. LeBron is out here killing this shit. Yes, he is. You know yes, he is. Like, like LeBron is out. Like, yo, he is really killing. Mm -hmm. Doing threes off the catch, off the dribble. Duncan spinning like he got to be in the conversation and then Jason Tatum how he's elevated and the Celtics are a number one seed Giannis is going to make Giannis. sure that the Bucks are flirting with a top 
tier C in the East, and then in BE also. So like there's all of these great candidates. He managed to name all of those players, LeBron James, John Morant, Steph Curry, the list goes on, before he ended up getting to Giannis. And when he got there, he just brushed them off like, yeah, you know, he's there, Giannis is there. They was over here glazing over LeBron James in the year of our Lord, 2023. He may have gotten more airtime on this pod than Jokic did. Giannis gets a sentence and Joel Embiid gets three words. What are we doing here, Jalen? If anything, the Joel Embiid disrespect here was even worse, but hey man, at least he's the betting favor for MVP. Now that's what we like to see, Joel well keep cooking i want that not only did jalen rose brush off Giannis in terms of mvp but he didn't even mention the bucks as possible winners in the eastern conference bro just says celtics and kept it moving are we not even going to consider the bucks is this what we're doing man not only are they just going to ignore Giannis' existence but we're going to ignore the Bucks' existence too? Giannis' season is not being taken seriously, and it is actually ridiculous because he is the best player having the best season that we have seen this season. Best record in the league, top five offensive player in the league, and a top five defensive player in the league the best two-way player in basketball. But the crazy thing is, him being one of the NBA's best defenders just brings me to another point of him being ignored by the media. And this might be the worst part. Again, the season started off with him being number one on the defensive player of the year ladder to open up the year. Bucks had the best defense. Giannis was playing at an elite level with better shot impact numbers than anyone else in the league and there was no denying it. But now, the Bucks are the number two defense in the league and Giannis still has the best shot impact numbers in the league. So where's he at now on this Defensive Player of the Year award ladder? If you guessed he's not even on it, ding 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 motherfucker, you got it right. It's been three months in a row now where Giannis isn't being considered a top 10 defender in the league by NBA.com's Depoy ladder. Now some of the players being ranked ahead of him are Dylan Brooks, Lou Dort, number 36, Zubats, Alex Caruso, and his own teammate Brooke Lopez being top two for all three months that Giannis has not been on the list. Once again, the Defensive Player of the Year award is being narrative driven, the narrative that the media wants to create. And this time, their narrative is that Brooke Lopez, the anchor, is the defensive player of the year. Now, where was this logic last season when y'all had two guards as the top two vote getters? What did I say to begin this video? Consistently inconsistent. What even is the criteria anymore? Why can you change it on a season to season basis? Forget all that though, man. Give me the best pick and roll defender and the best help defender in the league. Giannis has been coasting out there on the defensive end and he is still having arguably the most impact. This dude can barely even try and still be a top five defender in the league. This is how good he is. But that doesn't seem to matter though. They still will not push Giannis no matter how great he's going to perform. I feel like we have to remember though, there was a time when Giannis was being pushed heavily by the media for regular season awards and rightfully so. But there was a point somewhere in his story where everything changed and you could trace that all the way back to December 15th of 2020. It's not often that a true NBA superstar days in a small market. You can think back to maybe Tim Duncan 20 years ago. I mean, but that's exactly what Giannis did today, agreeing to the Supermax with Milwaukee. Giannis made a decision that he would be sticking with the small market Milwaukee Bucks that originally gave him a chance and helped mold him into the dominant superstar he is today. But this is not what the media wanted. Of course not. They wanted the Golden State Warriors. They wanted the Miami Heat. They wanted Giannis in a huge market where they could constantly have him in the spotlight. Giannis has got to leave Milwaukee the Bucks ownership blew it when they paid when they played him cheap in the last offseason. You need a guy as good as Kareem Abdul freaking Jabbar if it's a big to win a single championship. Stephen A, you're right. No one's ever going to sign there. And Giannis needs someone like Steph Curry or James Harden. He's got to leave if he wants to win a championship. I think they have to win a title, Rach. I just don't believe they can do it. I do not believe in the Bucks being Ooh. able to get through the East and then knock off whomever they may see in the West. The choice ahead for him, Nick, it's ironic that you're here because the one team lurking out there that I don't know how this would happen, but the one team. Oh, it team, can happen, baby. They got the money to make it, it has happen. always, the Warriors have always been the big threat. And this might have been the point where Giannis wrote off winning any more regular season awards for the rest of his career without even knowing it. The same group of people that were voting for Giannis to win all of these awards were the same group of people that wanted him to move on to a team in a large market. He didn't give them what they wanted. Maybe Perk was right. Giannis does have a 0% chance at winning the MVP award and the Defensive Player of the Year award. And it's all because his all-time play is getting ignored by the basketball media. But if the media wants to ignore Giannis, they can go ahead and do that. 
because let's not forget when they wrote him off after the 2020 season, he delivered an incredible run in the postseason to prove everybody wrong. He might not win a regular season award ever again with this treatment, but the one thing they will never be able to take away from him is the one thing that Giannis can earn. It's over. The Bucks have done it. The Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions once again. I want to thank the front office, the ownership, for uh, you know, believing in me.